Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. Of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. What is the deep in the book of Genesis? Mankind's knowledge was of the very way the physical medium itself was constituted and how it operated. Grid of the Gods Joseph P. Farrell, page 169, Oxford Scholar. The ancient Sumerians, Egyptians, Chinese, and Indian civilizations had a deep and profound understanding of matter and energy. The Bible gives deep insight on how matter and energy was created in the deep understanding that the Israelites possessed of this information. George Lemaitre, 1894 to 1966, astronomer, physicist, Catholic priest, father of the Big Bang and modern cosmology. Father George Lemaitre a Belgian priest and astrophysicist published a paper in 1927 in the Annals of the Scientific Society of Brussels that first presented the idea of an expanding cosmos. In 1931, Father Lemaitre proposed what later became known as the Big Bang Theory of the Origin of the Universe. The Catholic Church honored Father Lemaitre's work. He was elected to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences in 1936 and named prelate in 1960. By contrast, in 1948, astronomers in the atheist Soviet Union were urged to condemn the Big Bang as a reactionary theory, hoping clericalism a hostility shared by many scientists and philosophers worldwide until 1960s. Beside showing their compatibility of faith and science, the case of Father Lemaitre illustrates the way in which minds and cultures shaped by the belief that God is a trinity of reason and love have proved fruitful, and perceiving order in the universe. Moreover, it is arguable that belief in God, who is beyond creation, has freed us to theorize about the causation and change of the cosmos as a whole, rather than simply accepting the totality of material reality as an internal, unchanging given. Scientific process is the discovery of a more and more comprehensive simplicity. Father George Lemaitre. George Lemaitre was a Catholic priest 
So his interest was telling history from a biblical point of view. The atheists of the Soviet Union realized this. And they were against this idea of the Big Bang because they understood that it was a retelling of creation or the story of creation as composed in the book of Genesis. George Lemaitre was a clever man. He found a way to give the book of Genesis scientific validation. Many people believe the Big Bang Theory supports atheism or the idea there is no God. Fewer people probably don't realize that. That idea came from a Catholic priest who used the Big Bang Theory in support of the Bible, God, and the compatibility of the two ideas of science and religion. The diagram of the Big Bang showing stages of the universe expansion, the Big Bang event, then inflation, then quark soup, which are pre or subatomic particles, big freeze out, first galaxies, Big Bang expansion, 13.7 billion years. The time is really not relevant. And I'm going to explain why. Key feature, Father Lemaitre predicted in 1927 that the recessional velocity of distant galaxies would increase in proportion to their distance, like the separations of spots on an expanding balloon. Two years later, Edwin Hubble confirmed the existence of that law, which has since been validated by space-based telescopes to a high degree of accuracy. These ideas are based on Father Dimitri's idea of the Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory is a very old idea. The Babylonians, Sumerians, Egyptians, Greeks, Romans, they all believed in this theory. Father Lemaitre updated this ancient idea or view of cosmology or the beginning of creation. Let's take a little look into the Big Bang Theory. Time begins. Number one, the cosmos goes through a super fast inflation, expanding from the size of an atom to that of a grapefruit in a tiny fraction of a second. Remember, the ancient Egyptians called a tomb, which is the atom, the atom, a tomb. And the ancient Civilizations call this idea or this period the cosmic egg. The atom was considered the cosmic egg. Number two, post-inflation. The universe is a seething, hot soup of electrons, quarks, and other particles, subatomic particles. Number three, a rapidly cooling cosmos permits quarks to clump into protons and neutrons. This takes place, according to this theory, in one second. Number four, still too hot to form into atoms. Charged electrons and protons prevent light from shining. 
The universe is a super hot fog. Number five, electrons combine with protons and neutrons to form atoms, mostly hydrogen and helium. Light can finally shine. This is a reinvention of the Bible, the story. Number four explains the universe is a super hot fog. It's basically dark. Number five explains electrons combine with protons and neutrons to form atoms, mostly hydrogen and helium. And finally, light can shine. He's retelling the story of the Bible in a scientific way. First there was darkness and now comes light. One billion years ago, as you will see for yourself, the timeline is really irrelevant. Number six, gravity makes hydrogen and helium gas coalesce to form the giant clouds that will become galaxies. Smaller clumps of gas collapse to form the first stars. Number seven, as galaxies cluster together under gravity, the first stars die and spew heavy elements into space. These will eventually form into new stars and planets. The ancient Egyptian cosmology. This is where George Lemaitre. How can you say um, came up with his idea of the Big Bang Theory cosmology, but we can use this same chart using the cosmology of the ancient Babylonians, the Assyrians, the ancient Indians, the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans. These civilizations all worship the same gods under different names. And what you're going to find out is these so-called gods was nature, protons, electrons, stars, planets. They personified these ideas. Number zero. The Big Bang. That idea, the ancient Egyptians called Zep Tepi. Number one. Hot and dense state. Rapid expansion. That idea, the ancient Egyptians called Nu or Nun. Number two. Energy converted into subatomic particles, quarks and electrons. That idea, the ancient Egyptians called Primordial Mound, Pata, or Primordial Lotus. Number three, atoms and light elements begin to form. This idea, the ancient Egyptians call nafer atom or atum or atom. Atoms and light and elements begin to form. Atum is the atom. Number four, sun, stars, and galaxies begin to form. This is atum ray the ancient Egyptian name for the sun. Why? Because suns, stars, and galaxies begin to form. They're worshiping a process. Number five, planets in life begin to form. The ancient Egyptian so-called godhead, Enid, Enid. Because these are planets so this idea unifies observational astronomy and particle physics. The idea is how did the ancient Egyptians, the Babylonians, Sumerians, these ancient civilizations, the Greeks, knew and wrote about atoms, subatomic particles? How? We're going to find out. The ancient Egyptian goddess Nu, 
or not. Personification of unformed matter. Wave particles. Sea of energy. Egyptian goddess Nu. Personification of unformed matter. Subatomic particles. Wave particles. She's represented with these wavy lines. These are particles that move in waves. That's why she's represented with these waves. Sea of energy. Ocean of energy. New or none. Mythology. New. The watery one or none. The inert one. An ancient Egyptian religion is the personification of the primordial watery abyss which existed at the time of creation and from which the creator sun god Ra arose. The same article with Nu explains that you can also use the same chart with other civilizations. In the Mesopotamian mythology, Nu was called Abzu. Also, in other civilizations, they use the term Cosmic Ocean. In the Bible, Tahoma, primordial waters of creation in the Bible. Tahoma. Tahoma is a biblical Hebrew word meaning the deep. It is used to describe the primeval ocean and the post creation waters of the earth. Genesis. To whom is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, where it is translated as deep. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. King James Version. Blue Letter Bible. And the earth was without form. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The word for of the deep is to hum. I can use the ancient Hebrew, the Hawam, the Hawam, but for clarity's sake, I'm going to use the words as they are written, to home of the deep, to home of the deep, to home. The deep is a sea or ocean, subatomic particles, sea of energy. The deep, a sea of energy. The Blue Letter Bible. To whom has multiple definitions and meanings. But we're looking for number C. Primeval Ocean. Deep. Primeval Ocean. Deep. To whom in the Blue Letter Bible, in a poetic way, the word was used for water. Poetically, the word was used for water. Also, wave, a wave, and ocean and sea. Now, wave is very important in this poetic usage of the term to home. The deep or to home 
of a poetic word, water. It's also used for wave, as in wavelength, particle waves, ocean or sea, because it's describing an ocean of energy. The cosmos is described as a ocean of energy, wave, as in water, as in particle waves. The cosmic ocean, a cosmic ocean, primordial waters or celestial river, celestial because it's in the heavens. All civilizations use these poetic terms to describe this ocean or sea, this cosmic ocean of energy, radiation, particles. The ancient Greeks used the term or the word Oceanus to describe one, the Atlantic Ocean, two, this cosmic ocean of energy that we call space. The ideas of ancient Greek mythology about the ocean demonstrates a typologically more advanced stage. When the image of Oceanus becomes the object of pre-scientific research in natural philosophy, Oceanus is presented first of all as the greatest world river surrounding the earth and the sea because the earth is inside space giving rise to rivers, springs, sea currents. It's a shelter of the sun because the sun is in space. Shelter of the sun, moon, and the stars, which they rise from the ocean and enter it. They're describing the sun, the stars, the planet living inside space in this ocean of energy. The ocean river touches the sea, but does not mix with it. The sea, as we know it, the seas, the oceans, they we're in the earth. We're in space. But the rivers, the oceans that we are familiar with doesn't actually connect with space. It's in space. That's what the Greeks are trying to explain. In the extreme west, the ocean washes the boundaries between the world of life and death. The creation. The creation. In the beginning, God created Heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In the Word was God. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God.
verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him, there was not anything made that was made. Verse 4, and him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world but people love the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil John chapter 3 verse 19 and I'll T the church of Elijah the prophet Sovetskaya Square 7, Yaroslav, Yaroslav region of Russia. This fresco can be found in the Church of Elijah in Yaroslav, Russia. This icon represents the days of creation from the book of Genesis.